I keep thinking I've done my last video on this project and then something else gets added to it and I think that's cool I'd like to share this so here's the latest add to this simple SDR transceiver that in my opinion on the electronic side is a little more than a one tube radio but like a Volkswagen bug with a Porsche engine under its hood the real power of this project lies in its software Quisk and FL Digi. This time I want to show you a feature in Quisk that I had previously overlooked, but now finding quite useful. Out of the box, Quisk has the ability to telnet into a set of spotting servers commonly called AR clusters. Now, I'm not a contester, nor do I chase DX, so all this stuff is new to me. And if I explain something wrong here, please keep the record straight and say so in the comments. My CW niche is rag chewing, where the conversations are casual and the pace relatively slow. And because I like DYI projects, I particularly enjoy those contacts where the guy on the other end is also working on something he's built or modified. But when was the last time you worked a homebrew station? In my opinion, they're harder to find than a de-expedition. And how could AR clusters, which are focused on spotting DX, mesh with linking up builders who like to talk about their projects? Well, the manual side of the network probably doesn't. But there's an automated component to it called CW Skimmer aka the reverse beacon network and it reports hearing anyone sending CQ, test, or QRZ. Another thing to know is not all cluster nodes are linked to skimmers but those that are will often support user-defined filtering. So with a little help from Google I found two server sites that did just that and added them to my quiz configuration file. In its original form, Quisk will show spotted stations in the ribbon under the pan adapter view, alongside stations or frequencies that have been stored to memory, or favorites as they're called in Quisk. It's a very clever arrangement, reducing tuning to a point-and-click process. After having the basic telnet feature enabled for a while, I found that adding filtering reduced what was being displayed in the ribbon to a more interesting subset. Next, I added a tabular or grid view, as Python calls it, so that I could now see what was going on on other bands other than the one I was listening to. And finally, linking this listing or the ribbon markers to QRZ was a natural in the quest to identify other builders. These new ads, plus the other features previously described, make this little rig a dream to operate. I hope you can see the possibilities here and how it might be refined to suit your own needs. Well that's it, and as always, good luck with your next project. Thanks for watching.